Forum Marketing. What follows are step-by-step -step directions for successful forum marketing of ClickBank products. Please note that you should have your three-layer content marketing system already set up. This is a series of articles posted on your blog that link to each other. You have to have these already. These are not only targeted to your keywords, but they also compare different ClickBank products in your niche. Look at the three-layer content marketing portion of this training to get the inside scoop on how to set this up. Step-by-step -step directions for ClickBank forum marketing. Step number one, use Google to get a massive list of forums in your niche. Now that you have a massive list of keywords related to the products that you're going to be promoting, as well as your niche, enter these keywords one by one into Google to look for forums. You're not looking for blog posts. You're not looking for Quora questions. You're not looking for places to post Facebook comments on. Instead, you're looking for actual forum discussions or, better yet, forums that are directly targeting your niche. If you can't find forums that are directly related to your niche, look for sub-forums that are directly related. If you can't find that, look for off-topic or general chat sections of these forums where people talk about your niches. Step number two, create a real looking account complete with your picture, biography, and other details. Please note that you don't have to include your personal picture. You can just use a picture that is related to your niche. The point is that your forum account must look real. This means that when people look at your profile, they would see a picture and a short biography. Make it look real. Do whatever you need to do to make it look real. Step number three, post 50 to 100 times to establish a track record. I know this may seem like a lot, but if you are really into communicating with other people, sharing your thoughts, and otherwise engaging with forum members, you will be able to post 50 to 100 times over a number of days fairly easily. During this time, you should not drop any links. This is very important, because if you drop links from day one, you're going to make people suspicious. People might think you're a spammer. Just interact with people, ask questions, raise issues. If they say something controversial, call them out on it. Always be respectful, but get the conversation going. Step number four, once you have established some level of credibility by posting 100 times, find high quality third party links that people are interested in and share that link and talk about that content. You're sharing this material to get a conversation going. For the next 100 posts, 30 of those posts must involve some third-party link. This must be high-quality content, and it should be obvious that you're doing this to get the conversation going. Do not post the same link over and over again. Also, use many different sites. Don't just use one. You should not create a pattern where it's very easy to see that you are there to promote. Step number five. After 200 posts, drop your own level one link as a response. On forums, you can post in two ways. You can either create a discussion thread or you can reply to one. When you reply, you're just answering an existing conversation. For 100 posts, respond to other people. But once you reach your 200th post, look for a conversation that is most related to the topics raised by your level one content and discuss these issues. Copy and paste stuff from your content and then link to your page as a source. Step number six. Drop your level one link as a discussion thread after 300 or more posts. From post 200 to your 300th post, engage. Do not post your own links. Instead, build more credibility. By the time that you have 300 posts to your name, you should be able to create a discussion about your layer one content. I hope you understand how this works. Follow this sequence. Otherwise, you're going to be dismissed as a spammer. Resist the temptation of just dropping links and leaving. That's not going to help you. People are not going to click your link. Also, many forums enable users to create signatures. These are clickable links of text under their forum account names. Since you're going to be trying to fly under the radar, it's a bad idea to use such a link. Don't do it. The only way you're going to be linking to your website is through the actual discussions and responses to discussions. In addition to message boards and forums, you might also want to consider using Reddit. Take special care when working with Reddit. You'd be better off looking for a subreddit dedicated to your niche or something closely related. Using the same rules I mentioned above to establish credibility before starting your own discussion threads with your link in them. Comment on blog posts that use Facebook comments. Here's the step-by-step -step directions you need to follow for this marketing technique. Step number one, use your targeted keywords in Google to find blog posts that use the Facebook comments plugin. Use this search parameter, your keyword or key phrase here, plus Facebook comment plugin. Of course, modify that search string with your specific keyword. You use one keyword at a time. I know you have a lot of keywords on your list. 
Do unique searches for each one of your keywords using that string, and you should be able to retrieve a lot of results on Google. Step number two, go through each result and filter them based on relevance to your layer one content. Click through each and every result. Read each post. Does it make sense to comment on this post and refer to your layer one content? Is there a strong enough connection? If the answer is yes, then copy and paste that result to a separate file and keep filtering your results. At the end of this process, you should have a long list of blog posts that use the Facebook comment plugin that are related enough to your niche. Given this topical similarity, it's easier to post your link on your responses to these posts. Step number three, answer issues raised by the blog post. It's very important to signal to whoever wrote the blog post you're commenting on that you actually read their post. This means you're going to avoid posting, hey, good job, or I love this post, or other similar garbage. Instead, you're going to repeat some of what they said and explain your understanding of it. Then, you're also going to raise issues with them or raise questions. You may not agree and say so. After you do that, Raise key points that are related to your Layer 1 content and then quote a segment of your content and then post a link. Done properly, your comment is not going to look like spam. Instead, your comment actually enhances the content that you're commenting on. Step number four, make sure you only post when there's a direct fit. I can't repeat this enough. You must only post comments on a blog post that directly fit your niche. There also has to be a natural progression from your level one content to whatever content you're commenting on. Step number five, pace yourself. Look at each post as an investment. It's going to take you some time to craft a winning comment. You can't rush through this. You can't post garbage. You definitely cannot copy and paste the same answer over and over again. This is why you need to pace yourself. Each comment should be at least 200 to 300 words if you're doing this right. Obviously, you can't do this all day, so set up a schedule where you're commenting maybe 10, 20 times per day. The good news is this is an investment. If you're only posting high-quality materials, chances are most of your comments will not be taken down. Also, chances are people are actually going to click through. Shortcuts. Hire a virtual assistant from congoplus.com for only $30 per day. Not only can you set quotas with them, but they only list people who have a college degree and who have a strong command of the English language. Similarly, you can hire virtual assistants from places like Fiverr.com. Whatever you do, make sure you screen English proficiency if you're going to ask them to help you with this form of ClickBank marketing. Quora Answer Marketing What follows is a step-by-step -step guide to marketing on Quora. I've already described what Quora is and how it works in the overview section. If you need a refresher, check video 3 once again to get a clear understanding of what Quora is, how it works, as well as its advantages and disadvantages. In this video, I'm going to step you through the process of how to promote on Quora. Step number one, use your niche keywords to get questions regarding your niche. At this point, you should have a long list of keywords. These are keywords that are directly related to the products that you have selected. Enter these keywords into Quora's search box. You should be able to retrieve at least some questions related to your niche. Step number two, filter questions based on how they fit your level one materials. At this point, you should also have your three-layer content system set up. The first layer is a blog post that informs the reader regarding the problems that they have and the range of solutions as well as a common sense guide on what to do and what not to do. The layer 2 material that you produce must talk about a particular category of solutions and why they're better than other solutions out there. The layer 3 that you produce uses a comparison of the different products that you have found through ClickBank. I hope that much is clear, so if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that. The key here is that your content must answer key questions that your audience members would have in mind when looking for solutions. Also, your content must answer those questions. In step two of Quora Answer Marketing, you have to filter all the questions that you have found on Quora in terms of how well they fit your level one material. If there are not enough questions that directly fit, you might want to hire a virtual assistant to create questions for you. Of course, they're going to have to use many accounts. They need to switch among different accounts to make it look legit. Regardless, you need to populate Quora with questions that are directly related to your niche and which are directly answered by your Layer 1 or Layer 2 materials. Step number three, answer 10 to 15 questions before answering your first niche-related question. If you're going to be using your main account on Quora to answer questions, you have to be very careful. You can't just answer all questions that are directly related to your niche and forget about everything else. If anybody wanted to ban you, they just need to look at your answers and they would see a clear pattern. 
It's obvious that you were just answering only a certain type of question and dropping your link all over the place. That's a dead giveaway. Don't do that. Instead, answer 10 to 15 questions across a wide range of topics before answering a question that is directly related to your niche. Step number four, answer your niche-related questions this way. Throughout my years of marketing on Quora, I've noticed certain patterns that grabbed more eyeballs and produced more results. Your answers should fit the following pattern. First, you need to answer the question directly. Read the question several times. What are they asking? What are they not asking? Are there any limits to the answers that they're looking for? Next, quote materials from your resource. If you're going to be dropping a link to your Layer 1 content, quote a block of text from that content and explain why it is relevant. In other words, you have a specific answer to the question and then you quote from your source, which is your Layer 1 content, and then there has to be a paragraph explaining why that content is relevant or makes sense in this context. After you've done that, you include a link to your Layer 1 or Layer 2 content and claim that this is your source. If you do this right, you're not going to get banned. Also, if you do this right, people who read your answer are more likely to click through. Step number five, answer 10 to 15 questions before answering your next niche-related question. This is a big deal. You can't just answer only questions related to your niche. You're going to be too obvious when you do that. I suggest that you answer 10 to 15 other unrelated questions in a wide range of unrelated niches. When you answer these questions, drop links randomly. This is curated content that answers their questions and are extremely helpful. These links are not related to your niche. When you do this, you build authority. You begin to look like a legitimate and bona fide member of the Quora community. Step number six, drop your target link 15% of the time and do not copy and paste. It's really important to establish a healthy ratio of linked posts on Quora. As I keep repeating, when administrators check your account, they must not see a clear pattern. You must throw them off. Your account must look legit. Your account must look like the account of somebody who truly likes helping people by answering their questions. How do you do this? Only 15% of your total posts link to your own pages. The rest link to other third-party content or do not have links at all. Also, none of your posts are simple copies and pastes of each other. You're not just using some template over and over again. If you are able to do this and you are able to maintain a 15% ratio, you probably will not get banned for spamming. I can't guarantee anything, but the chances of you getting banned are going to be lower than people who just drop a link every time they post.